Dive into the world of pocket billiards, where legends are made and pros play. Let's queue up for an exciting journey. Long drive, man. It, it was. Everybody, did you leave there? Uh, I left there at six forty-five this morning. Okay, you started to say something. I got oh, you. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You're fine. All right, everybody. This is Chris Wilmoth. I'm here with another episode of the Pulling Around Show. Today, I am honored to have the legend himself, Mr. Buddy Hall. Buddy, thank you for taking the time. My and, pleasure. Um, took me a little bit to uh, get a hold of you. I had an old number for you um, that I got from you. I contacted you on Facebook and got your phone number. You got a number on me now, right? I do. I do. Um, you know, Will Worthley, that, that he owns. Will, yeah. Yeah. He, uh, he, he gave me your phone number. I interviewed him when I first started and done a little little clip on its pool hall and he uh, he's done he's done a lot of good things with that place um so i've looked on youtube stuff and and back in archives and you know and other than you other than you doing commentary like I watched one last night where you you were doing one with uh with grady matthews we, we were, usually have done a good one together yeah yeah yep um, All I like about Brady is he thought he knew everything. <laughs> I, I bet, I bet he did. Um, so I want, we are going to talk about pool, but I want to talk about growing up. Then I want to talk about. Um, you mind if I raise my bed no, up go and right, lean back here? No, go right ahead. Get comfortable. Get comfortable. <laughs> So, like I said, I, I haven't seen, I haven't seen really anything of anybody interviewing you on on YouTube or anything. Yeah. So these videos, to me, they serve they'll serve two purposes. One, it'll let people get to know you a little bit better. And the other was for your own entertainment. Well, <laughs> no, for when for. So my dad. So I told you I had a, we had a wreck in uh, in 2020. Okay. So then January the 26th of 21, my, my dad passed away. Sorry to hear that. I have, I have nothing, nothing that has his voice on it. I got pictures, I got pictures, but I don't have a voicemail or anything that has his voice on it. And there's times, there are times that I want, I want to hear his voice so bad and I can't. Mm -hmm. So this is going to serve, serve that, that's basically the same purpose that, and the, that I don't have, that she wants to go back and see and needs to hear your voice. Did you ever call uh, 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 Pat Fleming's thing, uh, AccuStats? I, I haven't I haven't got that far yet. Um, now, he's got it. every video you can think of. Yes, sir, I know it, I know it. And they just done the International Open and he had been busy and they said they'd get back and get in touch with me. Whenever they got that all situated, and and then the holidays were here, and I didn't mess with anybody. During the I'll holidays. go with you sometime. You get ready to go to one of those places. I'll go with you. Heck yeah, sounds sounds. I like probably ain't gonna have much money. No, that's, well, but well, I'll go with you and help you out best I can. If you're if you're riding with me, you don't. We won't worry about we won't worry about that. I'll borrow it from my wife. Well, so, I do a lot of I do a lot of commentary when I'm. At those shows, yeah, yeah. They, uh, I'm a natural, I uh, guess. Yeah, know a lot of know a lot about the game. So, did you did you grow up here? So, Born and raised here in Metropolis, in, in Metropolis, Illinois. Um, so, what what was what was growing up like? I mean, how was as a child? Well, I hung around in, on the river and stuff like that. It's a small town. We had uh, we had three pool rooms at one time. Uh, actually, we had five pool rooms at one time in this town. And, uh, now we've got one. We got one. So when did when did you realize that 
pull is what you wanted to do instantly. When I went to the pool room, played the first game I knew, I I didn't want to do nothing else. And and so you turned you turned pro in 1970. So when did when's the when did you make your first dollar playing pool? When I was 17 years old, I won a major tournament. Okay. When I was 17. 17. That's. And now. Now, what year does that put me in at? You were born in 45, so that. I was be, born 45. So that'd be 62. Huh? That'd be 1962. 62. 62? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So that's 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 about 11 years before me. I just turned 50, so. You just turned 50. I just turned 50 in November. I'm 28 years older and now I'm 78. Yeah. Yep. Um, how, how long have you been in here? In here? Mm -hmm. This place here? Or a couple weeks, Jackie? A month. A month? You've been here a month already. They do uh, physical therapy with you every day. Huh? Do they do physical therapy with you every day? No. No? No, they would if... I don't want to do what they want me to do. I understand that. I'm, just, I'm, I'm not going to get up walking around and stuff, and I can't do it. I got a bad knee. Okay. It kicks out of place every time I stand on it. I can't walk because of my knee. What about a and uh, my lower back? What about a mobility scooter? Huh? What about one of those mobility scooters? Um, a walker? No, no. It's a look. It's like a little. I'll show you. I'll show you a picture here in a little bit. But it's a. It's it's a little scooter. It's a little. It's got a seat on it and a battery and a little gear. And then you well, can, I've asked for those a million times. They won't give me one. Um, you drive them everywhere. I had to. Um, it, I've only been using this cane here for about for about two months. I used crutches for a long time. And then, uh, but I used that scooter, used that scooter for a little while. And then they gave you a scooter. Well, my wife was in the wreck with us and she, my wife is, she's Comanche Indian. Well, the tribe give her a, give her a scooter. Um, and she, all she done was she broke. Oh, she's Indian. Yeah. She broke her foot in three places. Well, she was back to work in a month on a knee scooter, not using her mobility scooter. So I used her scooter just driving around. Riding around the house until I until I yeah I understand. Well, we might as well get back to what we yeah, were doing. Sir. I'm sorry, yes, sir. No, not at all. Um, so, so growing up, um, won your first major at 17. So as in 1962. Um, so between 62 and when you turned pro at 70, where you're on the it's on the road full time or. Pretty much, as much as I could be on the road, I I, I was never home. Um, My parents very very seldom saw me. Who uh, who was your running partners when you first when you first started out? I don't know. I had different friends. Calvin Carner was uh, probably my best friend. Him and Gary Bright from Oklahoma City. Yeah. Uh, driller, huh? Driller, is that who they call Driller? Gary Brock, Gary, Gary Drennan, Gary Drennan. That was Driller. Yeah, yeah that's the Driller. He ain't got enough sense to run with me. He's he's gone now. I had, oh really? Yeah. He died. Yep. Uh, maybe two years ago. He was in Oklahoma. Uh, not Oklahoma. He was in uh, Detroit with me. Now, I wasn't saying that in a bad I know, way. I know, I know. And the they, driller was all right with me. Yeah. Um, how long were you in Oklahoma? I lived in Oklahoma for a while, Oklahoma City. Yeah. Um, I lived in Houston for a while. They want me to come back down to Houston now. Um, you played uh, Norman Hitchcock? Yeah. Yeah. I've heard, briefly heard the story, that story. Um, I, I only met him one time, but by that time he was. Norman was kind of a nut. Was he? Was he? Good player. 
but he wasn't solid, you know, up here. Right. Um, My was- wife at that time and this and Sherry Sewell, he said, he, they came in the front door. He said, I knew it. I knew it. He said, they're witches. He said, I just saw them go out the back door and they come in the front door. <laughs> you know, he was, he was that way. <clears throat> um, seen him play one time. At, there was a pool hall in Norman in the 90s, early 2000s called the Huxlers. And a friend of mine was going to school there at OU. And we were playing in a tournament. He draws he draws Norman the first round. He breaks. My friend Matt breaks, makes a ball on the break. Doesn't have a shot, pushes out. And Norman runs out the set. The set? <laughs> runs out the whole set, race, race to seven or nine. It's dangerous. He, he was. He was. Who was uh, – so tell me about Reds. I hear about Reds all the time. Um, there was an action spot. Yeah, an action spot. It was people would played a lot of pool for money there. Right. Right. Um, would you? Were, I played Efren there. First time I ever played him, I played him right there. I beat him out by uh, twenty five hundred. I think it was. Uh, I beat Efren the first twenty three times we played. I beat him twenty three times in a row. Um, I think it was John Guffey that was telling us the story that um, he was talking to Efren and they were talking about who who was the best nine ball player. And he said, buddy, buddy's the best nine ball player. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's when he come in as. Yeah, he did think I was the best player. I thought he was the best player. I'll tell you the person that he couldn't beat if they was at the top of their game was Mike Siegel. Oh yeah. Mike was a bear. The, uh, he, I've, I've watched him. I was trying to set up an interview with him. And if you ever get a chance to watch him in the finals and any of those videos of Pat mm-hmm. Fleming's, mm-hmm. you'll be doing yourself a favor by doing that. He is an amazing player, especially when he gets to the finals. When he gets to the finals, he don't make no mistakes and don't miss no balls. Right. He's a tough son of a gun. Um, he, uh, he's very. He's very vocal when he plays. Yeah. yeah. Um, he whines a lot. He's a whiner. You know, Cosell, hired Cosell, said, well, this guy's a whiner. He wasn't a whiner. That's just the way he was. That's right. That's right. But Cosell called him a whiner on national TV. Wow. wow. Um, so I posted, put up today that I was coming up here today, and I said, if uh, I come up here, what are some questions that you would like for me to ask Buddy? So, let me get to that. If you're here tomorrow, I'll go to the pool room with you. Okay. Um, Can you get a room out I've got, here? I've got, I've got one. Well, uh, if you want to, you just call me, and the pool room don't open till 11 o'clock. Okay. And we'll go to the pool room. You set your camera up again there. Okay. Uh, um. So, a guy named Sean Brooks asked me to have you talk about said, uh, your 91 match with Mike LeBron. Uh, Pardon me? Mike LeBron. Uh, I think Mike won that. Um, I, I beat uh, uh, that Dennis Hatch. And uh, who was the other guy? I won it twice. I won the the U.S. Open two times. Right. I don't think I beat Mike. I think Mike beat me. I might be wrong about that. It's been so long ago. So another guy named uh, Robert Anthony Marino. They call him Okinawa Rob. Remember him? No. Um, said he used to come to True Loves, and the buddy gave me his thoughts on on playing on the natural and not trying to find a chemical mix or number of beers to find his own. Buddy would see guys rush off to the toilets, and Buddy would slow to a grind. He has many stories about how to beat those guys. 
said, I've played on the natural ever since. So I know that we... Uh, oh, if you have to see him or talk to him, tell him I said thank you. Yes, sir. I will. I will. Um, and we talked to interview Jim McDermott uh, back in... That was uh, Mike... Uh, Tall Mike, Mike Betts. Yeah. That was Mike Betts' buddy. They lived yeah. in the same house. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, Mike just dropped dead mm -hmm. over there. There wasn't nobody there, but uh, Sissy, the, his daughter, and she didn't go by that by Mike's room, and Mike was laying on his bed dead. Yeah, he told us. He told that would have been awful. He told us, told us about that. So it was like his, it was like his brother. Yeah, they, they were close, very close. To ask him if anyone has a photo of the coat hangers and true loves with all the pros' names on it, signed above the years they were world champions. Do you remember the true loves? I guess I took a picture in front of some clothes hangers and it had all oh, clothes hangers. That's what he said, and ask him if anyone has a photo of the coat hangers in true loves. With all the pros' names signed above it, above and the years they were world champions. Well, brother, I don't know. Did you ever play? In I was a world champion fourteen times when I was hanging out there. Yeah. Yep. Did you ever play in any of the tournaments in Burl's basement? Burl's. Burl's. Okay, talking about Burl Horn. Are you talking about Burl Horn? I think so. I played brother. at his place, but it wasn't in no basement. It wasn't in a basement. Okay. Uh, ask about, of course, you talked about Gary Bright and Calvin. And then any, any road story, any road story about them too. Gary Bright was the best coin tosser in the world. Okay. He could land a quarter on the top of a hard back flat wood stool he could stand here at that door and do that he could pitch it and it would hit that hit that uh hit the top of that stool and go like this well it just hit and squat <laughs> just like that he was he had a talent for it he got me where i could pitch decent but i couldn't pitch nothing like that right it's a Good Calvin one. got to where he could pitch pretty good too from that, but he couldn't pitch like that. So Kim Davenport said, "Ask you about the players you competed against in tournament play." So you talked talked about Mike Siegel. We talked a little bit about. Uh, I played Kim. Mm -hmm. Kim, I knocked Kim out of the tournament. He finished third, and then I, I played. <coughs> I played Mike Siegel. I beat Mike. Yeah. And uh, Kim was a pretty good player, but he wasn't. A, he was wild. He was really wild. Yeah. You know, he'd haul off and blast and stuff, you know, and you're playing in a tournament. You don't do that. You try to play at a, at a, a level brain. Right. Right. Yeah, stay stay calm and focus. You think something like that, it would just it would make you lose your lose your focus. Yeah. Um. All right. So uh, Joey Ryan, he's a he's a Who? Joey Ryan. He is out of Arizona, but him and a guy named Melina Mike, they have a basically the same thing I'm doing. Uh, they're a little more broader spectrum than I am right now. But they go to they go to all events. Uh, Melina Mike just went to the uh, ten thousand at it one pocket in Sacramento this weekend. Um, but he said, uh, "You in your prime versus today's champions, who is better and why?" I was. That ain't a hard answer. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was the best player. I wanted to be the best player, and I worked hard enough at it. I was the best player. I've got the world record on world tournaments. Right. It stands to this day, and I doubt if anybody, but the only one I've ever heard of uh, 
Earl, I think, won five or six tournaments. Uh -huh. And me, I won uh, 14 world tournaments. Do you, uh, do you keep up with pool much these days? No. No. So, you know, matchroom sports, they, uh, what? Called mat matchroom. They're, uh, they're a company. There's a, um, I think they're out of, out of the UK, but they have, they have this co called the world nine ball tour. Um, and they're signing all these, signing all these pros to this world nine ball tour. Um, I'd do commentary for them if they'd pay me. I'm sure, I'm sure they would. Uh, um, Emily Frazier is the one, is the girl that's over that. Um, Who? Emily Frazier. Emily. Yep. Emily. Yep. Uh, sounds good. Young, sounds familiar. Young, uh, younger blonde haired gal from, from overseas, from Great Britain. But Matchroom took over the Moscone Cup. And, you know, they've done, they, so they bought the Moscone Cup. They bought the U.S., they're doing the, running the U.S. Open. Um, they paid me once to just come out there and sit in the stands. The, it was a seniors thing. Yeah, yeah. And I did. I went out there and sat in the stands. They gave me 3000 to do that. Did you go down to the senior one pocket they had a couple months ago in Houston? No. No. I said several of them. I'd like to be playing again or I can go and play in those tournaments, the senior tournaments. Um, I'd enjoy playing. There was a lot of a lot of people that got sick when they went down there. Just you no, know, I think Nick Warner come down with something. Mary Kennison says she she went out there and commentated. She went down there and played. I don't know if she played or not. I didn't ask her about her playing. Um, but she Nick she, Warner played. Mm -hmm. Nick Warner, I think Nick won. He beat Mark Dimmick. He won it. Yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Um. Is there is there anything? Is there anything coming up playing pool? Is there any, anything that you would have done different? I don't know anything that's coming up. No, you you coming up through the through the ranks, growing up playing pool. Oh, is there anything that you would have done different? Well, I started playing pool. I started playing uh, at Johnson City, Illinois, when I was sixteen years old. I lied to them about my age. Uh, I wasn't old enough. But I went to Johnson City and saw every top player in the world play, and I learned a lot from those guys. I mean, I learned a lot from them, the best players on earth when I was 16. Then I went up there for three weeks every year. So when you, when you turned pro in 1970, who was, who was the best in the world in 1970? Oh, Wimpy Lasseter. Wimpy was the best nine ball player, maybe the best pool player of every one of them was Wimpy Lasseter. Sure. He played all games perfect. He played straight pool. He won world tournaments in straight pool. He won world tournaments in one pocket and he won world tournaments in nine ball. He was the best player was Wimpy Lasseter and a heck of a nice guy. Wish I wish I could have could have met him. There's a lot of them I wish I could have met. Um, <coughs> you know, I didn't really get involved in pool till like 1997, um, and I went to that place in Huxler's and watched. Oh, Jeff Melton. I mean, Jeff. Yeah, he was. Is he doing okay? He is. He is. You had to stop in Tulsa if you done if you talk to Jeff. I uh, I, I I talked to him every once in a while. Last time I see him. I ran a tournament there in Lawton. He come down and played. Tell him I said hello I next time you see him or hear from him. Give him my number. I will. I will. Um, and then uh, trying to find James Walden so I can do an interview with him. But oh, he's in Tulsa. He's he's back. He's back in the city. He uh, James Walton yeah, is. Yeah, but all he does is, you know, I'm not. I'm not trying to. I don't. I don't know what he's going through, but. Apparently, all, where they say all he does is hangs out at the casinos looking for tickets that people didn't cash out, and he cashes them out. Yeah, looking for the red button on the video games. <laughs> he is. I, I, I know a guy that does that. 
uh, Gene Catron, the Mighty Glove, not him. Uh, he he wouldn't gamble like that anyway. Uh, the person that done it was uh, uh, the Goose Benny Conway. Oh yeah, he done yeah. that was what he done. He got got a pocket full of money doing that. And he started out broke, but he got a pocket full of money, and his pocket kept growing. And that's all he done was that. Was that? Wow. Wow. Um. So, what do you think? If you if if pool if pool wasn't in, if you weren't involved in pool, what do you, what do you think you? You would have done if I wasn't involved. If you wouldn't, if you never started playing pool, what do you think you would? I have done? no idea. I have no idea what it would have done. I got no. Idea. That's a heck of a question you asked there. Well, what do you think would have happened? I bet you don't know either. I don't. I don't because I don't know. I don't know what I would have done. What I've been doing for something. I've been a salesman all my life, you know, but. And pool, pool was just a just a hobby. Um, now I'm trying to turn it into a job, but at this aspect of it, and not not playing. Um, one thing I can't walk around the table like I used to. Now, yeah, I know you understand that, but I don't see good enough. Like on a big table, I don't see good enough. Um, so this is this is my. Con contribution contribution to the game is is I want to you know I want to keep the history of pool relevant um, you know I've I have interviewed shoemakers I interviewed Kent Taylor Kent Taylor is one of my favorite people in the whole world yeah speak up for me to hear you I said Kent Taylor is one of my favorite people in the whole world you know and I, I interviewed him and he told us about um, all those guys knew me, didn't they? Yeah, they sure did. <laughs> Every one of them. Every one of them. Um, of course, um, John Guffey, you know, um, and he's back. He's back to not playing competitively, but he's playing. A, he's playing a lot. Uh, he's in the city, isn't he? Yeah. Yep. He hangs out on at 50th and May, don't he? He does. He does. Him and, him and my co part in this uh, play one pocket in there every, every yeah. Thursday. Every Thursday. But he play, he's playing a lot of golf, too. Yeah. Um, when weather allows. Um, Call Sir Joe. Yes. Okay, we're doing this. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Because um, I, I can, I can edit stuff. Um, so, so you'll be if we if I come get you tomorrow to go to the pool hall, you'll, you'll be. Able we'll to, go to the pool room, you, you and I. Okay. Give me a time. I'll make sure. And. Uh, and we'll play some. It's one of the nicest pool rooms in town. Don't eat. Don't eat. Don't eat lunch. Eat lunch there. Okay. Great food. All right. I will. What's the What's the name of the place? Um, Sully's. Sully's. Sure S U L L Y apostrophe S. Sully's. Okay. All right. Maybe I can, maybe I can learn something. <laughs> huh? Maybe I can learn something. Well, I'll go out play pool with you as long as you want, as long as I can. Yeah, definitely. I'll, uh, I don't know how long I'll be able to play, but if I got a chair there that I can sit down in when I get through shooting. I don't, I, I don't have the stamina to play very long either. So you make balls. I most of some time. I mean, well, I, if you make balls, that'll help me to, to rest when I'm not yes, shooting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and I'll try to make it where you can rest when, you're not shooting. All right, all right. Sounds like a sounds like a plan. Um, and then we'll we'll video and kind of do a second part tomorrow, and and uh, then I'll buy your I'll buy your lunch. Okay. All right. Hey guys, um, appreciate y'all tuning in. Uh, this is part one of visiting with Buddy Hall. Tomorrow we'll do some uh, videoing at the pool room and and talk more about uh, about his life as a pool player. I'm looking forward to it, guys. And see y'all next time on the Pulling Around Show.